Hi sisters, today I'm going to be talking about a stand-up comedian who built his career off of lying about being in 9-11. Also subscribe because I'm trying to get to 300,000 subscribers before the end of July. Now listen, this was a news story that was brought to my attention when it first happened seven years ago. There was a stand-up comedian who got canceled for some comments that he said. Oh, come on now, cancel culture, really? Are we really gonna do this? <laughs> yes. Now this fella's name is Steve Renazizi. He was in a couple random TV shows. He had a couple clips get put on Comedy Central, and that's about the peak of his career. Now, Steve is from New York City, baby, and most of his family is as well. So to sort of boost his career, he made up a story about being in 9-11. Popular comedian in hot water this morning, coming clean over a lie he's been telling for 14 years. Steve Ranazisi now admitting he lied about escaping the Twin Towers on 9-11, oh, confessing he wasn't even downtown that day. <laughs> he wasn't even downtown that day. He's like, yeah, I was actually in New Jersey. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. What an insane thing to build a career off of. I mean, you can look at all the people in the past who we've talked about. This may be one of the most malicious lies that has ever been told. There's probably been more malicious lies, like, politically and stuff like that. But like, imagine if your favorite YouTuber spoke about being in like the Boston bombing, and then we find out that they were in Rhode Island the whole time, and then they expect their career to still flourish after that. One of Steve Renazizi's most viewed clips is a video of him on Howard Stern talking about this entire situation. ABC's David Wright is here with the story. David, good morning. Good morning, Lara. There have been a few 9-11 liars over the years, borrowing someone else's tragedy to give their own lives meaning or value. But this guy built a career in Hollywood, starting ironically enough with a job on the show Punked. Well, it turns out he punked everybody. I need to say, before we <laughs> continue with this fucking news story, I hate most all news broadcasters. Now, I, I guess you could say that uh, the real attack was on his fans. What? Sorry to just barge in here like that. I'm here to say that this video is sponsored by Aura. Literally anyone can find your information on the internet, including your full name, your email, your phone number, and basically everything else that you want to keep private. To test out Aura, I did a Google search of one of my family members, and genuinely everything came up about them. Their home address, their phone number, their email, and wowza Rooney that spooked me. This information is accessible because of data brokers. They profit by selling your information to robocallers and telemarketers. But that's where Aura comes in. Aura will identify data brokers that are exposing your information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll even get you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. If you're interested in this, then please click the link in the description below or go to aura.com slash Jake Doolittle to check it out. By using that link, you get two weeks for free and you'll be able to see how many data brokers are sharing your information. And if you don't click the link in the description, just scan the code right here. Aura also features a VPN, a password manager, and real-time credit and identity theft monitoring. So again, please go to aura.com slash Jake Doolittle for your free trial, or just scan the code right here. Now back to the regular content. Could you recommend a Doja? Jack? You've probably seen him on those ads for Buffalo Wild Wings. Big break. Hi, I'm Steve, and I've helped millions claim their fantasy football riches. Or starring in the FX sitcom, The League. Let's get back to the draft order, please. His stand-up special is due to air on Comedy Central this weekend. Steve Ranazisi, a comedian whose star has been rising ever since he lied about where exactly he was on September 11th, 2001. Now, here's the thing. Like, this guy was brought up with the Bobby Lee, Chris D'Elia, Brendan Schaub group who took off in the past five years. I don't think this guy's funny at all. Also, the podcast appearances that he did are getting like 3,000 views. I don't think that he would have that kind of career. But it's funny to imagine, like, if this New York Times article was never released, would this guy just be skating by and making money off of 9-11 comics? Comedy. Pete Davidson's like, hey, hey, could you not do this? <laughs> That's my thing. So you were aware, where were you when 9 11 happened? 54th floor of the so South you're in Tower. in the second tower. Yeah. In 2009, he told Paulie Shore and friends he was working at Merrill Lynch when the first plane struck the North Tower. Another thing that I think is fascinating about this guy is like he's saying things that are so easily debunked. Early on in his career, he said that he went to drama school at a specific college. Turns out he never went to that college and he also majored in communications. I walk outside, I see the fire and everything, and then I watched the second plane hit the second tower. The story even more vivid on Mark Maron's podcast. And then it just, bang. 
oh, and then it just spank. Right, 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 right. That's how most people describe a terrible tragedy. <laughs> You were standing right there. Well, it was like underneath the giant overpass that was... Uh, and all your co-workers were upstairs? Yeah. A few small details have changed over the years. For instance, in one interview, he didn't see the second plane hit. Oh. He heard it. And then I heard the plane hit our tower. His route home changes, too. We had to walk across the Brooklyn Bridge back to Brooklyn where we oh live. Oh, my God. Later, a different bridge. I walked across the Manhattan Bridge. <laughs> Stevie boy. If this is one of the reasons that you're on people's podcasts, then please like write down all of your facts. Okay. I walked across the Brooklyn Bridge. I need to remember that. All right. Do not say Manhattan. I've never been on the Manhattan Bridge. <laughs> He's like, I never lived in New York. I've never been there. But the essence of the story that he told us recently as a week ago was that the trauma of 9-11 convinced him to quit the financial industry and move to LA to- Oh. So that's like his coming of age story. He's like, yeah, I experienced one of the worst terror attacks on this country ever. And uh, it turned me into a funny guy. And it was all a lie. He never worked at Merrill Lynch, wasn't in Lower Manhattan. This is my favorite part. In fact, Merrill Lynch didn't even have an office in the Twin Towers. <laughs> now, I knew about this story going into it, but I feel like it needs to be spread to more people because what an insane person. You have to be crazy to say this on a public platform and be like, what this will do, actually. Never did any research being like, oh, was the investment banking company that I said that I worked at even inside the building that I wasn't in? When the New York Times confronted him, Renazisi came clear. I was not at the Trade Center that day, he said in a statement. I don't know why I said this. This was inexcusable. I am truly, truly sorry. I don't really care about what this guy has to say after this. But let's see where Steve Renazizi is at now. Okay, so he's got 48,000 followers. Let's check this out. So we've got, oh, we've got a recent clip. Oh, 338 likes and two comments. Stevie, baby. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. I mean, here's another clip. Uh, oh, two. 106 likes. Steve. Hey, Steve, are you okay? It's actually insane to look at where he's doing comedy right now. He's doing comedy at a place called Governor's Long Island. Genuinely, I think seats just over 100 people. This guy at one point was selling out theaters because of the Buffalo Wild Wings commercial that he was on. Let's check out one of these clips and see if this guy's actually a silly fella. Was that one over here? Movie spoilers? Movie f you, dude. <laughs> Go, uh, you, uh, see it. <laughs> see it before I see it, or don't come out. <laughs> fuck does that mean like genuinely i'm not kidding you i don't know what the context of that video was and then you look at the comments and it's the guy who he tagged and then some other person he also tagged youtube up now on at youtube <laughs> yeah actually whenever i post a youtube video i'm not kidding i genuinely send a link to every employee at youtube and i say hey would you mind checking this out i need the numbers look at this guy's bio it makes me so happy Kevin on the league. How long ago was the league? It ended in 2015, right around the time that he got caught in lying. Two stand-up specials, Manchild, Breaking Dad. Not only did you steal somebody else's tragedy to build a career off of, but you also stole a special name. Oh, let's click on this YouTube link. Oh, oh yeah, it's just pasted in the bio. Man, how old are you? Pod. What's the odds? I don't know. What are the odds that you were actually 9-11? Okay, and then we try to click on his website here. Not, not possible. And then we can click on his website there. Whoa, cool fucking shit, man. What's his biography say? Does it say anything about 9-11? Whoa, this hasn't been updated in years. Renazizi recently filmed his second one hour comedy special. That came out 2014. This guy genuinely has nobody behind him. Holy shit. Renazizi emerged on the scene in Los Angeles after leaving a desk job in New York where he grew up. He worked at Merrill Lynch in the Twin Tower. <gasps> what? <laughs> Imagine. I click this contact page and it's literally just his phone number. Any news about him? No. What about his tour? Oh, honey, there's no tour happening here. Here's a clip from his 2014 special. Let's see if this highly produced special can make a fella giggle. Sherpa for my kids. That's all I am. You guys know what Sherpas are. Those people that carry rich white people shit to the top of mountains. <laughs> who huh? get no credit whatsoever. Huh? Just pack as much stuff up on their backs. You never, there's no editing when it comes to packing. 
if we need it, just bring it. He'll carry it, sure. <laughs> Double strollers, pack in place, car seats, two of them, because they're light as a feather, why not? <laughs> backpacks, I have backpacks, an Elmo backpack and a dinosaur backpack. And they're filled with food. I don't know what my kids eat. All I know is everywhere we go, they don't fucking have it. So I have to pack it and bring it with me. <laughs> Trying to keep my kids in front of me like a hockey goalie. And thank God my wife is there, guys. Thank God. Because who else would carry that heavy Us Weekly magazine and half-drunk bottle of Avion water? <laughs> <laughs> that editing was so good. So it shows his kids. We're going to have to blur out his kids' faces. But also, this kid has his backpack on. This other kid's playing with another backpack. So first of all, that's just fully incorrect. And then he seems to be doing the captioning himself because watch this. And come on, man. Do a little bit better. His YouTube channel has... <gasps> 831 subs. You were on Howard Stern and Mark Marin and Joe Rogan. Yeesh, a mighties. And uh, he has a podcast talking about football. His Facebook has 12,000 followers. That's pretty good. Is he getting any engagement? 90 likes. Let's fucking go, man. Let's check out this clip with four comments. To me, bowling is still fucking over. I okay. saw that bowling alley. It's right around the corner from here. You gonna go to that bowling alley? Go ahead. Have fun. Start a new variant. Have fun. <laughs> My kids the other day, they're like, Dad, it's raining. Let's go to the bowling alley. I go, I would rather take you to a glory hole. <laughs> I know, I know. That sounds harsh, but it's the truth. Why? At least you know what you're getting on the other side of that. Some hot chick. Or, or not, or just a, a, a man. Okay. We should go see him live. <laughs> Just goes to show, don't lie about being in 9-11, please. Yeah, I actually worked at a Starbucks on the top floor of the Twin Towers in 2001. We were handing out pink drinks, matcha lemonades, people were doing TikTok dances. And oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're telling me that there wasn't a Starbucks on the top floor of the Twin Towers serving pink drinks and matcha lemonade? Um, you think that Buffalo Wild Wings will still have me on their commercials? Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I've learned more about about Steve Ren is Izzy than you've ever wanted to in the past. Thank you to all my members for supporting me. If you want to become a member, then click the link in the description below. Also check out my clothing brand and fund for people with chronic illness. Never stop. All the support on those two things has been keeping me going and I can't thank you enough. Have a wonderful day. Bye.